So without further ado, let's take our nested lab environment that we've built up to this point and let's create these two network segments and we'll also create a logical layer three router, also called a gateway, that can do routing between them. So here is the topology we want to create. I currently have a overlay segment called overlay segment 10 and just to give you a nice fresh clean picture of implementing this topology I'm going to go ahead and remove this segment. Now currently we have four VMs that are connected to it so I'm going to go over to the vSphere client and I'll move those to a different network and that way we won't have this encumbered and we can remove it and then create this topology from scratch. So here in the vSphere client, in fact, let me go ahead and make that a little bit more transparent. That way you can still see the topology. And also in the background, we can also see what's back there should we need to. All right, so here in the vSphere client, let's go to the networking tab and let's go down to our overlay segment right here. And let me scooch this over a little bit because I need to click on the VMs tab. So I'll click on the VMs tab. And sure enough, I need to move those four VMs. So I can right click right here on the overlay segment. From the menu, click on migrate VMs to another network. And I'm just going to park them all over on the nested management to 192 for a moment here. Click on next and then select all the VMs. That's all four of them and click on next and finish. And boom, that's going to move all those four VMs from that network segment over to my 192 network. And there they are. All right. So now that there's no VMs on that overlay segment, let's go delete it. So back at the NSX manager, there is a refresh button right up there. Or we could bounce off and come back to network topology. And it may take a moment or two for the NSX manager as it communicates and works with the vCenter to realize that, hey, those four VMs are no longer there. So let me move the topology out of the way for a moment. I'll click on refresh and that looks a lot better. Fantastic. All right. So those four VMs are no longer there. So we'll go back to our segments. So we're on networking in the NSX manager under connectivity. We'll click on segments and we'll click on the three dots right here and delete and delete. And if there were VMs attached, it would give us a warning saying, hey, whoa, there's VMs attached. You can't delete it. And then we'll click on refresh and it is gone. All right. So to create this topology, let's start by creating the logical distributed router. And to do that with the networking tab selected here in NSX Manager, on the left in our connectivity, we're going to choose tier one gateways. There aren't any by default, but let's go ahead and create this router right there by clicking add tier one gateway. And let's name this our tier one router. And right here under HA mode, there's an option for fault tolerance, but that's going to involve another component called an edge node. So for now, for the HA mode, we're going to say distributed only. So this will be a logical router that each of our host transport nodes know about, but it won't have any services like fault tolerance because once again, that requires an additional component called an edge node, which we'll get to in another video in this series. So effectively, all I did was I specified that we're creating a new tier one gateway. I named it. I specified for the HA mode distributed only, and then we'll click on save. And boom, we now have this router logically sitting out there in cyberspace inside of our NSX environment. So if we want to do additional configuration, we can click on yes, or if we're done for now, we can click on no, and there is our tier one router. So if we click here on network topology and we zoom in, here is our logical tier one router. Let me scooch that down a little bit. And for the service that it's running, by default, there is a gateway firewall associated with our routers. and. Also by default, all the rules in that gateway firewall are permitting the traffic by default. So once we have this all set up, if we want to start creating firewall rules specifically for this tier one gateway, we can do that to control the flow of traffic going through this logical router. But by default, that firewall service for the gateway is allowing all traffic. So our next logical step would be to create these two logical segments and associate them with this router. So to create this segment on the left, 10.10.0, we'll simply go to the networking tab under connectivity and we'll go down to segments and we'll add our first segment. So we'll click here on add segment. We'll give it a name. Let's call it seg10. And for the connected gateway, we'll go ahead and select our tier one router that we just set up. And then let me move the topology out of the way just a little bit right here. And for this new segment, we want it to be associated with our transport zone called nested overlay transport zone, which both ESXiA and B are both supporting. And then we're going to specify the IP address that we want our router to use on that segment. So if this is the 10.10.0 network and we want to use 10.10.0.1, we'd put it right here. So for the IP address, it's going to be 10.10.0.1 with a 24-bit mask, just like that. And then we'll scroll down and click on save. And if we want to do further configuration, we can click on yes to continue. Or if we're done for now, we can click on no. And boom, we now have this router and this network segment right here, the 10.10.0 network with a default gateway address here on the router that we can use of dot one. So next let's create segment 20. So still under networking segments, we'll click on add segment. We'll call this one seg 20. 
We'll specify the attached gateway is our tier one router that we just created a few moments ago and that the transport zone this segment should be associated with is the transport zone that we're supporting on both of our ESXi hosts. So that's our nested overlay transport zone. And then we'll specify the IP address that we want to use here on the router for connectivity to this 10.20 network. So we'll put in 10.20.0.1 with a 24-bit mask and we'll scroll down and we'll click on save. And then we'll click on no if we're done configuring for now. And now we should have this topology logically inside of NSX. So if we click on the network topology tab and let me move this up here. Now we have seg 10 and seg 20 and we have our tier one router. So that's how we implement logical layer three routing inside of NSX. And in this example, just using a distributed router. And again, it's called distributed because ESXi-A and ESXi-B both know about it. So just to confirm that, if we went to system, and then on the left under fabric, we went to host, and let's expand our cluster here. These two ESXi hosts, which are ESXi-A and B, that's .31 and .32, they both now have that information about that router. So if they ever need to perform logical routing functions, either between two VMs that are on a single host or they need to make a routing decision before forwarding it over to a peer over here, over the tunnel, they both have that information about those networks. So as a test, here's what I propose we do. Let's go ahead and place a couple VMs in our topology. We'll put A1 here on ESXi-A on the 10.10.0 network. And let's also put B2 on the 10.20 network, which is gonna be hosted by ESXi-B. And then we can verify the routing and also the tunnel traffic between the hosts. So to implement that, let's head over to the vSphere client. So here are the vSphere client. If we go to the networking tab now, check it out. Here we have segment 10, has that little N in front of it. To represent, it's an NSX segment, so there's a little in there and a bigger in right there on the summary tab, and there is segment 20. So as far as VMs to play with, let's do some cloning, and we'll put A1 right here on ESXi-A, and we'll put B2 here on ESXi-B. So we'll just take one of these little tiny VMs, we'll right-click, we'll say clone, and we'll clone to a virtual machine, and this first one will be A-1, and we'll put it here in the folder called VMs for testing, click on next. And then we want to place this on ESXi-A, which is in our host transport nodes cluster, and specifically at dot thirty-one. Fantastic. We'll click on next. As far as the data store, let's just choose a data store that's local here on ESXi-A, and we'll do thin provisioning to save space. Click on next. And then we want to customize the virtual machine hardware because we want to make sure that A1 is connected to segment ten. So we'll go ahead and customize the hardware, and then have it automatically power on. So we'll click on next. And then for the network, what we want to do is we want to connect over to segment 10. There it is. And again, from a vSphere perspective, it very much looks and feels a lot like just a normal pork group, but behind the scenes, it's an overlay segment. So we'll go ahead and choose segment 10, click on OK, and then click on Next and Finish. And then we're going to repeat that process as we create B2 over here. So for the second one, I'm going to start with a VM that's on a data store already over here at ESXiB. So we'll right-click on the tiny ESXiB and we'll clone it and clone a virtual machine, and we'll call this one B2. And we'll put it in the folder called VMs for testing, click on next. And we wanna put this one on ESXiB, which is at 192.168.1.32, click on next. And we'll put it on a local data store there. We'll use thin provisioning, click on next. And then also we wanna make sure this is on segment 20, so we'll customize the hardware before having it power on, and we'll click on next. So for the network adapter, we'll use the browse option, and we'll grab segment 20, fantastic, and click on OK. And then we'll click on next and finish, and it is on its way. So those VMs are super teeny. They don't have a lot of functionality, but they're super teeny, and that's why they're deploying so darn fast. B2 is on segment 20, and if we go back to A1, A1 is on segment 10. Okay, fantastic. We can also confirm that in NSX as well. So back in the NSX manager, if we go to the networking tab and click on network topology, it should reflect those two VMs, one on each segment. We can also, right here from the NSX manager, we can validate whether or not that traffic will flow between those two VMs by going to plan and troubleshoot and then traffic analysis. And I just realized <laughs> that currently A1 and B2 don't have any IP addresses. So uh, the trace between them is not going to be successful because they don't have an IP address and they don't have a default gateway configured. So let me go ahead and configure A1 and B2 with their appropriate IP addresses based on our topology and then we'll go ahead and do some testing. So back to the vSphere client we go, and let me open up remote consoles. So here's A1, we'll open a remote console, and another remote console for B2 by right-clicking and launching a remote console. So the default window size is a bit teeny on this, but it'll let us put them all here on the topology, so I'm gonna use it. So there's A1, 
and there is B2. I'm just going to configure those IP addresses. So A1 will be 10.10.0.51 with the default gateway of dot one, and B2 will have the IP address of 10.20.0.52 with a default gateway of dot one on the 10.20.0 network. So I'm going to configure those right now. Also, in a later video, I'll walk you through setting up DHCP services so it won't be quite as tedious to apply IP addressing in the future. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and do it statically. All right, so on A1 over here on the left, I've configured the IP address and default gateway. I also did so here on B2. So if we try to ping between A1 over here and B2 over here, let's give that a shot just to verify connectivity. So here at A1, we'll do a ping over to 10.20.0.52, press enter, and survey says that is not flying. So let me go ahead and check my IP addresses with an IF config. So this is 10.10.0.51 on the left, and on the right, let's do an IF config. That's 10.20.0.52, and let me check my default gateway, and let me check my routing with the route, and 10.10.0.1 is the default gateway for A1, and we'll type in route here on A1. B2 and this default gateway is 10.20.0.1 and I believe those are the IP addresses I specified for the logical gateway here for both of those segments. Let's verify that as well. So we'll go back to the NSX manager, we'll go to networking, we'll go to segments and let me bring this down just a little bit and here we can confirm it's 10.10.0.1 and 10.20.0.1. Those both look good so let's go ahead and try the ping one more time. So I'll hit the F arrow key and we'll do a ping to 10.20.0.52 and that is not flying, so we'll do a ping to 10.10.0.1 just to verify I can reach my default gateway. <laughs> and that's not working. All right, so this little client right here is not able to ping its default gateway. Let's take a look and see what the problem is. And click down here on traffic analysis. And now that we have IP addresses and default gateways all set up and everything else, we can actually ask NSX Manager to tell us about whether or not a traffic flow should work or not. So let's click right here on Get Started for Trace Flow. We'll go ahead and use the default ICMP. And for the source, let's go ahead and choose A1. And that also confirms its IP address for the target. Let's go ahead and use B2. And that confirms the IP address there. So that all looks good. We'll click on Trace and see what the result is. So if the result says that it flows, that traffic is able to flow between those two, then it's likely a problem with our local VMs. And, oh, look at that right there. <laughs> so why is it being denied? Well, let's look at the play-by-play. -play. Oh, I got myself. So in the distributed firewall video that we previously did, I left rule 2024 in place, and it's very likely that that's blocking ICMP. Dang it. <laughs> Self-inflicted wound. Let's go fix that. So that's uh, rule 2024, let's go back to the security tab on the left, go down to our distributed firewall, and sure enough, there's our policy, we'll expand it. There's rule 2024, rejecting ICMP. Darn it, I'm gonna go ahead and disable that rule. We'll go ahead and publish that to push it out, and then let's go back and test to see whether or not we now can ping from A1 right here over to B2. And we could also go ahead back to plan and troubleshoot and back to traffic analysis. And we could rerun the test here as well. So I'll go ahead and click on retrace, click on proceed. And if that's successful, that also implies that the actual real traffic from A1 over to B2 should also be successful. All right, and it looks like it is. So if we look at the play-by-play -play here, the traffic was injected on the network. It was processed through the distributed firewall, which this time did not deny that ICMP traffic. Then it went logically through the tier one router. That's the logical routing process between the 1010 10 network and 1020. And all that work is being done locally here by ESXiA because it's the closest transport node to the source. So that's why it's showing here the transport node involved in these routing decisions is the dot 31, that's ESXIA. And then after the routing decision was made and it realized the target was on a different segment, it then used the Geneve tunnel and forwarded that traffic over to the tunnel endpoint at ESXIB, who then received it, did its processing regarding the distributed firewall, and by default, all traffic was being allowed. And then it finally delivered that traffic over to the target, which is as shown right here. So if we bring up those two VMs and now if we did a ping, now that ping is going to work and that traffic is literally flowing using the logic that we just saw here with Traceflow. So the traffic from this VM is being received by this host transport node, ESXIA. It takes a look at the destination, processes the logical routing on behalf of the tier one gateway, 
identifies that the destination is on the 1020 network. And then based on that destination network and also where the MAC address lives associated with that network, courtesy of the information provided by the NSX manager, ESXIA knows it needs to forward it over the tunnel to the owner or the host in charge of that layer two address for B2. And so that traffic is encapsulated, sent over the tunnel, ESXIP receives it, de-encapsulates it and forwards that traffic to B2. And then the reverse process happens for the response from B2 back over to A1. So I'll go ahead and stop that ping. So now we've taken a look at yet another feature in the world of NSX, and that is the logical layer three routing that we can do all in software. So whether we want to do micro segmentation and security with distributed firewall rules and or the ability to implement routing with a distributed router, to implement that, we need our vSphere infrastructure with NSX added on top of it. And that gives us the ability for the distributed firewall as well as the distributed router. However, there is a situation where we're gonna need some additional help from yet another type of node inside of NSX. For example, let's say we want some fault tolerance for our gateways with high availability. Or let's say we wanna go ahead and connect to external networks where VMs inside of the NSX routed environment wanna communicate with external nodes. And when we're using some of those additional features like high availability and connectivity to external resources, that's going to involve more than just a distributed router. That's going to involve what's known as a services router, providing those types of services. And furthermore, to implement some of those additional features like high availability, as well as connectivity to external networks, it's gonna require in NSX an additional type of transport node. And that additional type of transport node is referred to as an edge node in NSX. So our next logical step in the nested lab environment, if we want to use some of those additional features like high availability for our gateways and connectivity to the outside world, we're going to need to deploy edge nodes and those are deployed as VMs. And those are referred to as edge transport nodes in the world of NSX. So in the next video, let me walk you through the deployment of our edge nodes inside of NSX so we can then use those edge nodes for additional services.